wanted to know what the Golden Arches, remember we grew up, most of us who were um, uh, in the 50s, grew up with Mama Bear, Ma uh, Mama Burger, Papa Burger, and Baby Burger at uh, A.W. Root Beer. It was a family concept. So they had the family and drove the family to the window. They brought the food out. Some of them were still on skates. They put the window in, come back, get the food, and they would leave. But when McDonald's came, it was like, how do we get them in? How do we get them out? So they're looking at the behavior. So they got them in in regards to those golden arches and that uh, clown. So the kids was like, we don't want to see Mama Bear. There's nothing happening with that. We want to go see the clown. <laughs> but they got you in. So some of this is systems as well, systems and behavior. Got you into McDonald's, but what they wanted you to get out fast. So what did they do? Drive-through. They did drive-through, but before they did the drive-through, they made the seats hard. So they knew <laughs> that you can only stay on those seats for a certain long period of time. So you got in, and when you got comfortable, you were going home. And Donald was like, that's not working for us anymore. So then they did drive through, and the other thing they did was what? The play pins. And so the play structures are really huge. So they get the families in and the kids in and nobody can go home. And it's like, okay, how do we get these kids out of this play structure? And the play structures got larger and larger and larger. Well, we fast forward to 2013. McDonald's is catering to whom? Adults. They have coffee. They have exotic coffee. They have televisions and flat screen TVs in McDonald's. I took my niece to McDonald's a few weeks ago when I was in Pittsburgh, and there were people that were 70 and 80 at McDonald's looking at the news and drinking coffee. And the seats were comfortable. You can actually sit in there now. So McDonald's have looked at our behaviors and the systems and how do we get people in and get people out, and they've been very successful. And that's where we need to go as we're finding our voices for the patients that we serve. So Dr. Newman is going to join us by phone later today to talk about how she came up with this systems model and helping us to understand nursing and nursing care. Good Another is the adaptation theory, Roy's adaptation theory. She's also going to be joining us in regards to how we look at the patient and how they adapt to their environment, or how we as nurses adapt to our environment. There's more. <laughs> we have spirituality. Our own Dr. David Martins will come and talk about spiritual health and assessment. And spirituality, if you go and look at some of the, the roles of nursing and our students, and make sure you go and look at our students' presentations, because some of them have adopted the theories, some of them have adapted the theories. You know, so spirituality was not considered in some of the early theories, theories. And so they've looked at those theories and added on culture in uh, theory because the culture was not looked at in the theory as well. So Dr. Martins will be here to address theory with us. And Dr. Um, Phillips from UCLA, looking at ethnocultural models of gerontological nursing. Why do you think we're looking at aging and gerontology? <laughs> biggest group. The biggest group. More people aging. Living longer. Living longer. Yeah. We're actually doing, we have some students. Can the students here that's working on the black white crossover raise your hand? There's some in the black. So I don't know um, if you know that the black white crossover. African Americans have the highest mortality rates before the age of 60. When they turn 70, there's a crossover, and we actually outlive everyone. And so there's more African Americans in their 70s, 80s, 90s, and 100s than there are in the other population. So our students are investigating this flat white crossover. Because with this crossover, and one of the things that you'll find is that there's more women. Right. That's outliving. But what's happening with that in regards to disparities? What is that going to mean to you in the, in the hospital setting and for us and uh, patients? So our nursing students are out looking at the phenomena of the black-white crossover and aging. But Do Dr. Phillips will be here to talk about that um, to us as well. And then exciting new transitions. Dr. Sally Tucker-Allen. 
Dr. Tucker Allen uh, will be talking to us about communication among minority nursing faculty members. And I'm not going to read her bio because it's long and extensive and it's very, very impressive. But what I can say, as I said with Dr. Stella Robinson, is that we are standing on the shoulders of Dr. Sally Tucker Allen. She has paved the way in the Midwest as one of the first African-American deans around the country. And there's still not a lot of African-American deans. The Dr. Braylock and I from American University was just at a conference in Washington, D.C. There were 700 deans and directors there. There were six people of color yeah. in the room. And every day we kept counting to see if another person <laughs> But it was still the same number of, of people. And in the discussions, there was a lot about communication and how we communicate with nursing. Now, those of us who went to nursing school in the 70s know that there was this phenomena out there that nursing faculty ate their young. Yeah, and did. we would run every time we saw a nursing faculty come because we didn't want to be eat you know, the meal that day. <laughs> Are we still teaching like that? How are we communicating with our students? How are we making it for them to be successful? How are we going to make sure that we can address the workforce diversity issues that we have? Dr. Sally Tucker Allen has helped us with that in educating um, black nursing faculty. She started the Association of Black Nursing, nursing Faculty, where nursing faculty of color can get together and talk about their concerns and issues. She has the Journal of Theory Construction, so that we can also learn how to develop and test theories. She also has the Journal of Multicultural Nursing, so that we can talk about all of the multicultural dynamics in nursing and nursing care in patient care and student issues. So she is a trailblazer that's here today to help us find our voice and how we communicate with our students of color so that they can be successful students and be successful nurses when they join Keith at Cedar Sinai. Or if they join Keith at Martin Working Hospital. We want to make sure that our nurses are leaving ready to be leaders and future leaders of tomorrow. So I'm going to end with this story because it was also quite um, amusing. At the conference, when I, they had all the deans stand up and tell where they were from. So I got up and I said, I'm uh, Shirley Evers Manley. I'm the interim dean from Charles Drew University, Medicine of Science, Mervyn and Donnelly School of Nursing. And I had five people run over to me. And I'm like, what did I do wrong? And they go, we just saw all of your students at the, conf the nursing conference. Oh, and they nice. said, oh, I said, oh, you did? Yes, the three musketeers. I'm like, the three musketeers? <laughs> what are you talking about? And so we had, um, can you stand up? For, we had three African-American male students. <laughs> in San Jose, California. These, these deans that were at the conference come to me and say, your students were there. But what they wanted to say was that they were impressed that these students stood out before the crowd. And what impressed them more is she said, they said to me they wanted to get their PhDs. And she said, are they serious? I said, absolutely, because that's the first thing we preach to them when they come to the door. And she said, well, here's my card. She's from the University of Phoenix. She said, here's my card. Make sure they get my card if they're really serious. And I said, they are really serious. I said, in fact, we have eight students now, and I want our scholars, our bridges to the doctorate scholars to stand. Don't be shy. <laughs> leaving, they came into our entry level master's program. Once they graduate from our program, they will be attending UCLA School of Nursing, working on their PhDs in geriatric nursing. And so we're very proud of you.
and we are going to change the face of nursing, and we are going to know how to communicate with our students. So with that, I hope you enjoy the day, and we're going to have Dr. Uh, Tucker Allen come up so we can find not basically what is your message, but what is your voice. Thank you.